Hi, this is Mary Claire Speckler with the Bartholomew County Public Library. Welcome you to tonight's event, Standing Together in History Resources. The 9th Street Park Neighborhood Watch Group has been meeting in their Red Room for several years now. And so when we were asked if we'd want to host tonight's event, we said, sure, why not? In fact, having Tyler Munn as one of the presenters, of course, was a plus. And we hope that you enjoy the program. We want to recognize Tessa from our Digital Underground, who is powering tonight's event. She's the power behind the throne. And now over to you, Chris. Chris, you need to unmute yourself. Okay, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, it, I was trying to do two things at once. Okay, so when we started um, planning for the 2021 season, we did not know that the coronavirus and everything was going to fall apart during the summer like it has. And um, we often wondered what the fall season would be uh, be holding for us, because like you said, Mary Claire, we have been uh, with the library for two or three years. I can't remember exactly. We started out in the uh, small conference room and moving over to the red room. We usually have two speakers, as you know, and uh, now we're, you know, required to do the social distancing and people are afraid to sit beside one another and so on. So that's the reason why we are doing this Zoom presenta presentation. And like I said, I want to do I do really, really, really want to thank you, Mary Claire, Tessa, and Tyler for helping us put this together, uh, and also Pastor Johnny with the NAACP. I want to make a statement to make sure everybody understands my personal position. When I attended the rally, uh, I, this is when I met Johnny. I think that was back in, was that June, Elder Johnny? And I didn't understand what the NAACP was all about. I had been to the library multiple times, but after the string of violence in our United States, it really brought on a whole new meeting. So what I thought about is let's bring uh, the NAAC local chapter president, and then let's also bring Tyler on to help us kind of put the puzzle pieces together. And that way, if uh, someone has questions about the NAACP, then they can basically go to the Bartholomew County Library and they can research what information's been there. So our first speaker tonight is going to be Tyler Munn from the Bartholomew County Library. Tyler, thank you for coming. And Pastor Johnny, we'll get with you here in just a few minutes. And uh, Tyler, I kind of uh, sent an itinerary over to you with Mary Claire. And if you would like to introduce yourself and tell us what your position is. And um, one thing I did mention is like when people want to do any research regarding the NAACP history, how can they do that at BCPL? Okay, uh, first of all, thanks again. My name is uh, Tyler Munn, and I am the Collection and Discovery Services Coordinator here at the library. That is a recent title change. Uh, I've worked in the reference department here at the library for uh, many years. So that's a quick intro about me. In terms of uh, research um, specifically, uh, obviously, uh, People can come into the reference department of the library, ask any sort of research questions that they that they want to know about, and uh, the reference department is going to be your your first go-to for those types of questions. Um, so, for instance, if people wanted to research uh, something such as the history of the uh, NAACP, uh, certainly the reference librarians um, could point uh, them to um, the NAACP's website, local. Um, content, uh, local news sites um, related to the NAACP, uh, but also if, if people are just doing general research on, on any topic. Um, one great uh, statewide resource is called Inspire. Um, that is available at inspire.in.gov. Um, I can actually uh, do a screen share hopefully here once I get to the right 
but inspire.in.gov is a statewide research database um, that people can use to go to search for all sorts of uh, journal articles, magazine articles on any topic um, that they really need to do research on. Let me do a screen share here. Uh, let's see here. Okay, are you seeing my screen now? Yes, we are. Okay, so this is the library's website at mybcpl.org. It's certainly my homepage here while I'm on my work computer. So mybcpl.org is the library's website. Um, this green box that says digital library is really the key to doing any online research, research that you would want to do through the library. So if you were to go to the library's website and click on the digital library green um, button there, it takes you to this page where you have the four uh, boxes. So the read, listen, and watch uh, boxes, those are really the three that you wanna click on if you're kind of reading for pleasure. That's where you got your eBooks, your downloadable audiobooks, digital magazines. Um, they're all there. I could talk a lot about those, how we have thousands of eBooks and downloadable audiobooks. Just to quickly let you know, if you, go, if you click on the read, listen, and watch buttons, it'll take you to our resources for reading eBooks, audiobooks, and uh, downloadable magazines. So this fourth box, the uh, research box, if you click on it, what it basically does is it spells all of the online resources um, that the library provides or that the library wants the public to know about um, for, uh, for research purposes. Um, so, for instance, they're, they're divided by category. At the top, you can see the, all the different categories that we have the resources divided by. So for instance, under the research category, if you were to click on that or scroll down, um, you would see several resources that you could use for your research, uh, including the one that I mentioned earlier, which is called Inspire, which again is free to anyone in the state of Indiana. You don't even need to have a library card for that particular resource because it's just a part of the state library service to people in the state. Um, so that's where, if you wanted to, I'm gonna go click on Inspire real quick. Okay. That's gonna take me to the inspire.in.gov webpage. Um, this is a massive resource tool uh, where you could do something as simple as just typing in um, the topic that you're researching. I mean, that's a pretty general thing to do. You can certainly use combining different words, going more advanced, but it could really be as simple as just typing in a topic that you want to know more about uh, on the Inspire webpage. The, again, this is very general. All I did was type in one uh, NAACP as my only thing, a search topic. But it, there, there is, for instance, it says start your research. So you could click on uh, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People right there and get some um, vetted published information so that you could learn more about the NAACP. So this is just a quick, what it calls a research starter article. But if I was to go back to the previous page, so these are all published articles um, that you could read, you could filter through to really find what you're looking for. But I mean, all, all I did was I went and uh, inspire, clicked on NAACP and already uh, we're looking at all these published uh, articles that you could use to learn to learn more. Um, I am going to go back to the library's webpage. So again, back on the mybcpl.org resources page. Um, I mentioned how they're divided by categories. So there's another one called um, uh, genealogy. Um, so on the genealogy listing on, on the mybcpl.org page, one thing that we're featuring right now is Ancestry Library. Normally, that is a resource that can only be used in the library building. But since COVID hit, it's been made available for people to use from home. We don't know how long it will still remain available to use from home, but 
we're not going to go out of our way to keep asking. Um, we will keep it available for people to use from home as long as we can. So I tested it today from my home earlier, still worked fine. So I'm going to click on Ancestry Library to go to the library's link to Ancestry that we have. Uh, if any of you have, used, have your own personal subscription to Ancestry, it's going to look a lot like it. It's catered a little more to library, uh, the library model. Um, but this is the Ancestry Library page. You can search for census records, uh, immigration records, military history, vital records. Um, you can search individual censuses down here. Um, city directories, collection of pictures. Uh, but if you're really just looking for a person, like you want to start with yourself or you want to start with your grandparents, you could click on the begin searching button and, you know, type in your name or type in maybe your grandparents' name, um, someone that you know enough information about to get started. Okay. Um, and after that, um, it'll list, you know, possible hits and you can look through birth records that will come up, um, death records, census, military inscription records um, for people that would be in your family. And then the way that it works, anytime I've ever done it, is inevitably you find one thing of interest related to the person you're researching. And then you go off on all different directions and you keep finding out and making new connections through your family working on your family tree, you know, all that stuff is possible through uh, Ancestry, um, which is, um, again, can be used from home right now. Um, if you're at home, if you're anywhere other than the library for a lot of these resources, such as Ancestry, you will need to have a library uh, card number and a library pin. So if you already do, uh, that's great. If you don't, um, we do have a way for you to apply for an online card that could be used for online library resources on the library's webpage at mybcpl.org. I'm going to, so I'm back on the main library webpage. If you click on my account on the library's webpage, there is a, a link that says get a digital access card. Okay. You could click on that and fill it out and then you could have an online library card number and an online pin that could be used for all of the different library online resources. Has Have you seen a lot of people use that since COVID hit and has it been more than what you guys even possibly imagined? Uh, using the, the digital cards? Yes. Specific? Uh, yes, we have, the last time I checked, we've had about 2,000 2, people sign up for the online cards since we started that, which we've only had them for about um, a little over a year. So the majority of the time we've allowed it um, has been since COVID at this point, or I'd say at least half of the time. So yeah, I'm sure we've had over a thousand patrons sign up for online cards since COVID hit in March. Okay. So, well, it was... what, pro what programs does BCPL uh, offer, Tyler, as far as, you know, you're doing a great presentation because this is even showing me things that I didn't even know was there. Mm -hmm. uh, if they don't want to do physical research, what other things do you offer and how many departments are there? D departments of the library? Yes. Well, um, most, uh, I mean, there are probably, I mean, there is a adult circulation and a children's department, um, reference department, uh, the technical services department, which is where I work. Um, in terms of the public services, there are three main departments that you would run into, or four really. There's the teen department, the children's department, the adult circulation, and the reference department. Okay. Um, in terms of the online research, the reference department is going to be your first place to go to to get help with that. And they're going to cover, they would help you with uh, everything that stems from the library website, 
kind of which is which is what I covered there uh, on the mybcpl.org right. uh, slash resources page. Um, yeah, and in terms of the general research, um, the Inspire page, which I talked about, is probably going to be the best place to do just a general research online. Um, we also, of course, can help you. Did, did you wanted to know more about physical research or more about online research? Well, the physical and the online, kind of what I'm looking at here is on this page. It says search over 262 million obituaries from newspapers.com. Some people do not take any of the local newspapers. How long do those stay online? And I think the only thing that you really have to do is have a library card and you can come down and research those libraries for family history purposes, correct? Yeah, uh, and if people wanted to research the newspapers or the obituaries in the newspapers, um, so we subscribe to a couple different flavors of the newspapers.com service. Okay. Um, we have a, an archive which can be used in the library, an online archive um, for newspapers.com, which has coverage of the um, Republic newspaper back to the 1870s. Okay. So these are online scans of all of the newspaper issues, basically of the last 130 plus years that you can search by keyword, you could search by date. Um, let me go to this. Mybcpl.newspapers.com is the link which you can use if you're here in the library building. And it will show um, several different newspapers that are in the area. So obviously the Republic is the one that's most consulted here. So if one wanted to research an obituary, they, they know uh, family members or someone they're researching, they wanna research them. So they could click on the link to the Republic here on the newspapers.com archive and you know, if there's a, per a particular person's name that they're searching for, um, they could type that person's name in the blank, um, click on search. They could filter to a specific uh, date or years. Or if they wanted to read a, a specific, a significant date, uh, they're researching a specific event in Columbus, uh, they could go to that particular year, that particular month, I'm just picking a random date here. Oh yeah. Click on the day and it takes you to um, that specific uh, newspaper, the front page, and then they could go from um, page to page. You know, keyword searchable, um, printable, saveable, clippable, you know, all sorts of ways to save the research that you're doing. Um, uh, on newspapers.com. Okay. What about the bookmobile? Has that been affected at all uh, from the COVID point? The, the bookmobile uh, has been back out on the road making normal stops for at least a month at this point. Um, they have a regular schedule that they run. Um, of course, with COVID, what they've been doing is they have uh, some signs out on outside the bookmobile. They put out a little, um, a little sign that you know tells people to one one family at a time on the bookmobile. Okay. But in terms of the services that they're uh, providing, they're still providing the same the same service, the same regular stops. Um, they're getting out there. Um, so that's the regular stops. I've kind of got the map of the places that they go in Bartholomew County sure. on the screen now. They also yes. make, they can make stops by appointment if you were to contact uh, the bookmobile, especially if uh, you are someone that um, can't get out. Um, they visit homebound people um, to make deliveries. I think the most common day they do that is on Fridays. But if you wanted to contact the bookmobile, the, the number is on the screen on the left side, but it's 812-379-1278. Uh, 
to contact the bookmobile about the regular stops or making uh, deliveries. Tyler, do you remember a lady by the name of Sheila Lee that used to do bookmobile? Uh, Cheryl, Cheryl Lee, yes. Okay, she, she, I had her in grade school. So I, I was uh, pleasantly surprised to reunite with her once she came to BCPL. Oh, okay. So that's how I knew her. Okay, what about, uh, especially with the COVID in mind, uh, how are you checking in, checking out books? It, has the times altered? Are people still able to come and do physical research? What is your preference and that type of thing? Yeah, people can still come in and do research. And at this point, you know, we recommend the same sort of social distancing that everyone is, which is, you know, uh, wear masks when you're in the library building. Uh, don't, don't congregate in large groups, but we no longer have any sort of time limits for people to be in the building. Um, we kind of have our tables set up in a more spread out manner. We don't have any uh, tables with bunches and bunches of chairs. We're obviously encouraging mostly solo or small group uh, research. Uh, checkouts, you know, checking books out work just the same um, in terms of checking out. Uh, in terms of checking in when, you when people are returning items, um, we have some designated places that they return them to when they come in the building. In the entryway of the main library, there's a return spot we also certainly encourage people that they can use the outdoor drop box outside the main library or at the Hope Library. Um, and in checking in, what happens is the books are all quarantined. All the items are quarantined for at least three days before they're, they're touched and checked in by library staff. Okay. That's great information to know. Mm -hmm. What in... You said you've been with uh, BCPL how long, Tyler? Uh, Full-time since uh, 2004. Okay. So what else would you like to share with anyone and everyone regarding uh, the Bartholomew County Library? I mean, you've given us a phenomenal uh, amount of information, more than I've been aware of. That's why we have these meetings. Well... I would, again, just if you're looking for the online hub of the library, go to mybcpl.org, um, which here is on the page again. Um, the digital library link is going to be where you're going to have both all of your research uh, topics as well as just your general ebooks and online audiobooks. Uh, we also have an app if you're a person who has mobile devices. Um, you can download the Bartholomew County Public Library app on your uh, Google Play or your uh, and, uh, your Google Play or your Apple devices. Um, we're open and we got all of our services running that we can possibly have running right now in person. Um, we obviously aren't having as many meetings as of course this format that we're having this current meeting indicates. Uh, we still do allow some small meetings. Um, people can have small meetings at the library um, in our small meeting rooms, meeting rooms three and five. Um, but our collections are still out there. You can check them out. We're still working on um, getting new material and we're put, uh, displaying all the material that we have in ways that to, to encourage people to come in and visit the library. We understand that some people still are a little you know, hesitant about coming in, which is why we've bulked up our online presence in many ways, our online resources. So we're trying to um, provide all the resources we can in as, in as many formats as we can to the public. And what are the library hours? Library hours right now are 10, for Columbus, 10 to seven, uh, Monday through Thursday, 10 to 6, Friday and Saturday, and Columbus is open now Sundays from 1 to 4 through the end of the year, at least. Okay. Okay. And then the Hope Library um, is open 10 to 7, I have it on screen, 10 to 7 Monday and Tuesday, 10 to 5 Wednesday, 10 to 6 Thursday and Friday, 
and 10 to 5 on Saturday. And then those are our hours right now. We anticipate some, at some point when we get the go ahead and everything is moving forward to move to a slightly more extended hours than what we have now. But okay. we don't have a definite date for that. Okay, and uh, this is probably a dummy question, but just to make sure everybody's under the same understanding. If you take it from Bartholomew County Library, you cannot take it from Hope, or if you take it from Hope, you cannot take it back to Bartholomew County, correct? That is, that is not correct. Uh, Columbus, if you have a Bartholomew County card, you can check out items from either Columbus or Hope. And okay. you can have items sent from Columbus to Hope or from Hope to Columbus okay. if you need to. So like if you place a hold on an item and the Hope copy is available and the Columbus copy is not, it can be sent to Columbus for you. No problem. It all, it all works seamlessly behind the scenes. So okay. you can use your card at either location. It works okay. in both places. Well, that's great. Tyler, I really appreciate you being with us, and uh, you've given us a phenomenal amount of information. Is there anything else you'd like to share before uh, we release you to go live your private life? <laughs> I, I don't think so at this time, but uh, again, uh, the library website um, has a contact under the About section. You can use that to contact us. It'll have an online way, or it'll have phone numbers. Um, don't hesitate to reach out with questions to us. Okay. Thank you, Tyler. We really do appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, one of the things that we have been talking about in discussions of how to have these type of meetings and so on, because we don't want to um, seemingly let the public down, is we can either do Zoom meetings or we can do the um, basic Facebook lives. So therefore, what we are going to try to do, whether it be at City Hall, as we know that the courthouse is shut down um, and everybody seems to be virtual, is we are going to try, as far as the 9th Street Park Neighborhood Watch, we're going to try to do weekly meetings with some of the ones that uh, we had back in the spring and we are going to try to make it convenient for you, try to make it convenient uh, for the staff person who's gonna be uh, helping us. Uh, Tessa is doing a great job with this meeting. Again, we have to thank her for her behind the scenes accountability. Now I'd like to introduce uh, Elder Johnny Edwards who pastors a church here in Columbus, I believe. Pastor Johnny, how are you? Good. How are you, Chris? I'm doing great. Thank you for uh, being with us. And uh, what I'd like for you to do, I sent you a list of questions that we normally discuss here in this uh, type of forum. And I'd like for you to take your time, kind of introduce to us what the NAACP and then, of course, we just had a news announcement that, um, you know, the Black Lives Matter has a new chapter and they are forming and I've seen some of your posts. Anything that you want to talk about, you're more than welcome to. So I'm going to hand the torch off to you. And uh, if there's anything I can answer for you, please let us know and make sure to uh, announce the upcoming event. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you and dialogue with you. I pastor in North Vernon, Indiana. Um, I have a great membership and a body of diverse people that serve at the Second United Methodist Church there in North Vernon. So I don't pastor here in Columbus, but I do pastor in North Vernon. And as the president of the NAAC uh, for the Columbus and Bartholomew branch, we encompass uh, Seymour, uh, North Vernon, Madison to provide support to them as well as the NAACP chapter or a branch that allows for others to, if they have certain needs or certain things going on within their communities, we serve in that realm to provide support to those okay. groups. Um, just a quick little history about the NAACP. One of the things that Tyler mentioned was being able to go to the library and research um, how the NAACP all got started. One of the things I would like to share, which many people do not may not know, the NWCP was started in the early 1900s. 
and they started due to the fact to the 1908 race riots that took place. And so having that in the background of knowing how the NAACP came about is very important for people to see that we had a diverse group of people come together that uh, wanted to see change in the community, wanted to see change in the country. So it wasn't just an organization that was started only by African-Americans, but it was started um, by a group of diverse people. And that's why it's so important for people to understand that it's just not for Blacks, it's just not for Whites, it's for us as a community to unite and come together as a whole. Um, and that is one thing that I have found really interesting, that it, do it doesn't take one um, caller. It mm -hmm. is for everyone. Exactly. And I think that's the message that here now we're trying to portray in this community that even though we may not have the severities of systematic racism that you see where police brutality, we may not have those issues in Bartholomew County, but we still have underlying racism that has taken place that we as a community need to come together and find a way to get along and be able to dialogue, have discussions that are respectful. And that's what our message, that's what our mission is currently in this community is to find a way for us to come together, unite. And that's one of the reasons for the upcoming rally on September 17th that's taking place at City Hall. We have enough uh, hate going on. Mm -hmm. We have enough evilness that's taking place. Um, if we just look at some of the last, last few articles that have taken been published, some of the comments have blown me away at the disrespect that we have for each other, the disrespect that we point fingers and tear people down for no other reason than that we don't agree. And for me, I think the change has to take place with the NAACP leading the charge to say, you know what, we're a group of diverse people of all nationalities, all races, and we're coming together for one common cause. And that is uniting under the umbrella of unity for and respect uh, for all people. You know, you have people say all the time, all lives matter, but all lives matter can't matter until black lives matter in the all. And it's not that people are saying that, you know, all lives don't matter. What we're saying is that what we're seeing in our country today and what we're even seeing in the comments that take place in our own community is that people tear down certain groups of people because they don't agree. Well, you can't say they matter if you're going to tear them down. We have to be able to respect each other's opinions, respect each other's beliefs, respect each other's uh, experiences in life and be able to say, I may not understand it holistically, but I'm not going to degrade you because I don't understand. I'm not going to degrade you or demean you because I don't agree. I respect it and still find a way to dialogue and say, okay, if I don't understand, but I at least hear you. So hopefully through this unity message on September 17th, people will understand that we're coming together in such a time as this to make sure that we're respecting each other that we're building each other up. That's the only way a community can thrive if we learn to work together. So okay. Christopher, so hopefully that message that we send out, hopefully people understand that even in our local NAACP, we're very diverse. We work great together. And what some people may not understand, uh, we're of each different political parties. So it's not just for Democrats, not just for Republicans, not just for independent. It's for people who believe in right justice. It's for people who believe that all people are created equal. And I would encourage anyone that if they have an opportunity to register with the NAACP, participate with the NAACP, right now we have our 111th virtual convention taking place. It's taking place online. And today it's a discussion on criminal justice. Um, mass incarceration. The numbers are just uh, just his historically amazing of how people are becoming are incarcerated and uh, for no reason at all. Some are guilty, but they're getting the amount of times and that discussion has to happen. One thing we have to understand as a community is realize that these talks have to take place. These discussions have to take place in order for change to happen. There has to be an understanding between two parties to get an agreement or say, hey, I may not agree here, but I do agree here and work towards change. 
So right. hopefully we as a community will continue to grow with each other and find ways to uh, support each other in areas that we agree and respect each other in areas we disagree. Will there be a march on Thursday? No, sir, it won't be a march. We'll just meet at City Hall. We'll have several speakers from um, different backgrounds. We'll have Dr. Jane Sims from Calvary Community Church. Um, She's an individual. Speaker. She is well known, well known in this community, a part of a staple in this community. Uh, of course, we have Pastor Tyke who will be speaking, another well known individual within our community. Uh, John Sims, uh, a great young man uh, to provide perspective. Uh, from all the way around, grew up here, uh, coached here, now is an AD here. He also will be one of the speakers, and then myself. We'll have Pastor Bosley, uh, who will be speaking about some of the progress that he's making uh, with the African American Pastors Alliance, speaking on that progress that him meeting with the mayor and meeting with uh, Chief Richardson. We also have Pastor Harris, who will be taking and participating as the MC for this program. So we have a, a list of people, a group of people that will be coming together. This is not about, we're not protesting violently. We're peacefully trying to find a way for us as a people in this day and time to come together and find a way to move forward and not backwards. Okay. What, what would you want everyone whether they live in Elizabethtown or Fort Wayne, Kentucky, Tennessee, it doesn't matter. What would you want them to know about the local chapter of um, the NAACP? Is NAACP a national organization and they can find leaders in their community or how does all that work? Yes, uh, first of all, the national, the NAACP is a national organization. Matter of fact, it's one of the largest and oldest African American organizations in, in this country. Uh, again, as I mentioned, it started uh, back in the 19, early 1900s. And here's a piece of history that a lot of people don't understand. The very first president of the NAACP was white. It was a gentleman that was a part of starting with the W.D. Du Bois. So, it, it, it's for all of us that are believing in equality. So those that have uh, a desire to understand or get more information about their local chapters, you can go to NAACP.org. You can put in your zip code and it'll tell you who your local chapters are, your local units, and find out how to connect with them in growing or participating in that change that's coming. Right now, uh, locally, we're having a huge uh, drive for voter registration. As we all know, uh, it's 50 days until our election. We're trying to make sure people within the community are registered to vote. The deadline for that is October 5th. We also know there's early voting in Bartholomew County from October 6th to October 30th. So we're really trying to make sure the community is aware and what their opportunities are with these upcoming elections. One of the questions uh, before we get off on the, the uh, uh, voting topic, which we did a video this past week with uh, Sherry Lenz and um, Jay Phelps at the clerk's office. If you were to advise anyone to read a book or do more research on any Black history, where would you advise anyone of any race, creed, color, however they view, to start? if they would just wanted to start from square one? For me, uh, I know a lot of people have a series of great books that are out there, but I think the eye opener that I would recommend is the movie 13 on Netflix. If you have a Netflix, Netflix subscription, I Who think that's- Who are we kidding? Everybody's everyone, got a Netflix so okay, There you go. So there you go. So uh, for me, that's where I believe everyone needs to begin. It's a real life tale of how history uh, unfolded itself when it came to everything which you see in now with the release of people's emotions, protesting, um, the anger, even though some may not agree with how it's being dealt with. It's a great piece of history that started all the way back to the Jim Crow era to now and how things unfolded in the African-American community. So I would recommend everyone start there and then move into probably a few books here and there. 
but it's a it's a movie that watches and gives great information, great details, and a lot of good statistics that cannot be uh, just blown away or I guess just thrown in the behind the back door. Okay. Racial tensions have flared up all over the U.S. for the last few months or in some situations, people would say years. What is your advice for today, tomorrow, and the future? Uh, that's a difficult question because every situation seems to be different. I mean, peaceful protests didn't seem to work. You had Colin Kaepernick kneeling and people hated that. But, I mean, if I just go to the last Sunday, you had two football teams that decided to come together and just lock arms to show unity. And people had to have something hatred to say about that. It, that answer is so difficult to answer nowadays because no matter what the community tries to do peacefully, they're always torn down. They're always demeaned. They're always put down. So in this day and time, it, it, it's almost, if we don't find a way to discuss these hard issues, if we don't have a way to dialogue about what to do next or what's acceptable, we're going to continue to be at a standstill and people are going to take their own ways and means of responding. And you can never tell somebody how to feel. I mean, we're seeing that. You have one side of the coin saying, hey, we get to say what we want to say, but you can't do what you want to do. And then they have something to say about the peaceful protest. But no one has an answer. What is acceptable to those that don't want to see people do things the right way? So until that answer comes out as what is acceptable, you're going to have these situations continue to rise. People are not going to just accept the fact of, stay in your place kind of mentality. And it's just not gonna happen in this day and time. People are sick and tired of being sick and tired. So until we come up with a solution to help those that have tried to do the right thing the right way and not experience uh, hatred toward that, I think we're gonna continue to see these elements rise and continue to keep rising. Okay. So there's no yeah. real answer to give you. Yeah, you mentioned that you guys have been down at the uh, farmer's market, uh, mm -hmm. which I did bring that up uh, in our previous video. Uh, as we know, the Bartholomew County Courthouse is shut down to public. They You can't go in without the public and registering to vote, unfortunately, is not one of those things that you can do. But what people understand, um, a lot of the voting is done by district. So if you want to vote, with uh, whoever you want to be elected for the school board or your city council, county council, you have to vote within that district. If you have had additional uh, phone number really doesn't matter because a lot of people don't like spam calls. But if you have changed your address or had any modification whatsoever to any of your voters uh, information, how can they get a hold of you and how can they make sure that you have not saying that you won't turn them in, but how can they make sure that they see you face to face or someone on your team and get their voter record to be corrected so they can vote in the upcoming election? Well, one of the things we're going to start uh, making sure that we get the information out to the general public. Like you stated, we've been at the farmer's markets. We've been across from Lucabee's. We've been out by Coach's Cuts. We're going to continue. We've even had opportunities to canvas the neighborhood. We will take each weekend up until October 5th to be in the community somewhere. So whether we get an opportunity to put it on uh, the Bartholomew County Public Library page, the NAACP page, we're asking for others to share on their page. So we're going to find a way to get out into the community and wherever there's a great means of traffic with, with social distancing, being able to wear masks, protecting the public, we're going to find a ways to be there. So one way is if they want to go out to the NAACP Facebook page in Columbus, uh, it, it'll give the location of where we're going to be at and they can come up and get a form again. It's not based on your political party. We're trying to make sure everyone registers to vote and everyone exercises their right to vote. Right. And that way you have a voice in what is being said and done. Will you make house calls? Of course, if they don't mind, we do have a team of members that will come and bring the form to you. Uh, if you're not able to travel, if they wanna contact us, 
I mean, if you want to post my email address, they can contact us by email and okay. we will take and make sure a form or absentee ballot if they're unable or they're a certain age, maybe do not want to come out because of COVID, we'll make sure they get an absentee ballot as well. Again, this is not about a political party. It's about doing what our constitution and amendment allows us for us to do. Okay, now one thing that everybody needs to understand is we are running out of time for absentee ballot registrations. Yes. Uh, it, that is coming up very, very soon to where, you know, the clerk is going to say we can't do anything more. Uh, mm -hmm. This coming week, they discussed if you call 812-379-1604, you speak to Sherry or Taylor, tell them that Chris sent you, they'll say, oh God, what did we do wrong this time? But they literally have um, a lot of ballots ready to go out in their meeting room that it should be going out, I think today or tomorrow. And they have uh, received assurance that they're gonna work Tyler, Tylerlessly to make sure no vote is left unturned at the USPS. The Postmaster General for Bartholomew County has been involved. They've had multiple conversations. They've done everything that they know to do. The national rhetoric, unfortunately, has been I there's no other word that I would say it's been damning because people affiliate what's going on in Washington, D.C. to your local post office, and that does not have to be true. If you make sure that your ballot forms are given, if you make sure that it doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat, it, yes. we want everybody's voice to be heard. This is an astronomical election time, so utilize the NAACP. Uh, Cabrina is a good friend of mine. I know she yes. would be happy to help. Olisa is a friend of mine. She would be happy to help. They're mm -hmm. not going to tell you who to vote for. They're going to tell you to V-O-T-E. That, right. That's all they right. care about. Yep, exactly. And yep. we need to uh, really make our voice heard if we want to see change. If you don't know how right. to spell change, it's C-H-A-N-G-E, <laughs> not white or black. It is, Correct. It's in black and white, but, right. you know, there's nothing we can do about that. That's just how we print it. And but it's also how, important that people see that change is necessary. Uh, if they don't feel there's a change needs. Yeah, exactly. The famous slogan by uh, Councilman Wood was, change starts with us. It started with him and it starts with us as well to start being able to recognize right from wrong. And right. that's the key. We teach our children at an early age what's right and what's wrong. So does those values and morals still take place once we become adults is the question that we need to ask ourselves today. Is what we see seeing in this country, is it right or is it wrong? We can't pick and choose what we believe is right and wrong. We have to evaluate the things that are right and do something about those things and, and, and praise those things that are right. But when we see wrong, we have to be willing to stand up and call it what it is. Mm -hmm. Wrong is wrong. And, and until we get to that point that we're willing to stand against our social circles, be able to tell people uh, honestly, hey, that's wrong. And we, and if it means that we lose friends behind it, wrong is still wrong. And we're going right. to have to give an account for that one day. One of the things I was thinking about and why I even thought about this, I don't know, but I went over to uh, East Columbus Christian in grades uh, kindergarten through sixth, and they used to have mock elections. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you would walk up to another student and you would say, who did you vote for? Now, not knowing that you don't need to tell anybody whether you, mm -hmm. you vote for this one or that one, they'd say, because my mommy and daddy you know, told me who to vote for. We mm -hmm. want everybody to vote with their self-conscious. We want mm -hmm. everybody to make sure if you're tired of the racial inequality, and I'm not saying that the Democrats or the Republicans is responsible for this, even though everybody is welcome to their own opinion. That's why mm -hmm. this is, um, the, the thing about it is, uh, we are just trying to figure out What's the best course of action? 
We mm -hmm. don't have to vote white. We don't have to vote Latino, African American, whatever. We just need to vote. But understanding is a different concept that Americans today has fallen away from. Pastor Johnny, our time is almost up, and I'd like mm -hmm. for you to share with everyone, how can they get in contact with you or any of your lay members and let them know, hey, I have a question about this. This is what I heard. This is not what I was told. And how can they have a uh, basic conversation with you or anyone on your team? Just doesn't necessarily have to be you, just anyone. I would uh, definitely suggest, and I appreciate the opportunity to have this discussion. If you're interested in getting information from the NAACP, we do have a Facebook page. That's the NAACP, Columbus Bartholomew County. Please go on there, send us a message. If you have any questions, if you have something related to spirituality, uh, one of the things that we are firm in our belief at Second United Methodist Church is that, you know, it's about not about the name on the outside of the building. It's about the name that we all glorify and worship and praise. So feel free to reach out to us. We have a very diverse group that's willing to pray with you and come out and answer questions with you. I can be reached at uh, E-L-D-J-O-H-N Edwards at gmail.com. If you have questions about church or NAACP, and again, if you need questions about uh, voting or just the forms, reach out to us. Uh, it's about unity because in unity, there's strength. And hopefully we'll see everyone out there that is looking to be a part of this upcoming rally. The name of the rally is Hope Empowers Choices. And again, we have multiple speakers, diverse speakers, and it's about unity. And it's not about division because we all know what the word of God says, you know, a kingdom divided against itself will surely fall. And it's time for our nation to come together and unify. So if you have an, a desire to participate with NAACP, please reach out to us. We have several events, not only for old, but we have young. We're working with the Columbus Youth Development. We're doing things with voter registration. We're doing things with scholarships with the Heritage Fund. We're doing all that we can to impact the community in a positive way. Um, when we talk about change begins with us, then we have to make sure we're involved in good change and good values and good morals. So the NWCP is trying its best to make sure that we're making an impact in a positive way in this community for all people. And I may open up a can of worms here, but just a, a question that came through my mind. Go for it. On election day, will mm -hmm. anyone in the NAACP local Bartholomew County chapter provide rides to the polls if they failed to get their ballot? What we are trying to do is we're trying to team up to offer rides to early voting for those that may need help getting to and from the polls. These drivers will not discuss how you voted and you know who you voted for. We just want to make sure we're helping the people in the community. We want to make sure we're giving back. We want to make sure that we're doing our part to share in getting people to the polls. We don't want someone saying, I didn't vote because I didn't have a ride. I didn't right. vote because I didn't know where to go. So yes, the NAACP will be partnering with other organizations and teaming up and offering rides. You, you will have to um, uh, book those rides, kind of like an Uber type thing, but they'll be free right. of charge. We want to make sure that we're doing social distancing, make sure we're sanitizing the vehicles and everybody's wearing a mask. So we want to do our due diligence to keep everyone safe. But our goal is from October 6th to October, October 30th to provide transportation for those that are in need. Okay. And again, the 9th Street Park Neighborhood Watch is glad to be on board with the NAACP. You, we support you. you. Uh, hopefully it. this will reach, you know, a lot of people think that uh, because we say that we are 9th Street Park, that we only encompass Lincoln Central Neighborhood Family Center, which is 1st to 11th and then Washington to Central, but under Sheriff Matt Myers, we were able to expand to all of Bartholomew County. As I have been tell everybody, send us a message. If they need a referral, I can get you involved, I can get whoever, and that's our job, and I can, and a lot of times, if I don't have the answer, I'll make sure and work on it, just like I'm sure you would to find out. Yes. 
who is our representative, who do we need to do this, and you being a pastor, I'm a former pastor, um, the, the thing about it is we will get the problem resolved if at all possible. Correct. Heck, I'm sure even yeah. Tessa, who has done a great job tonight, would even help try to get a resolution. But, uh, well, Pastor, what is the name of your church again? Second United Methodist Church, North Vernon, it, Indiana. Who is the uh, gentleman that plays the organ? His name is Gordon Stewart. A very can tell, powerful guy. Can you tell him he's goofy looking for me? Okay, I sure will. I sure will. I'll All right. like that. <laughs> All right, Pastor Edwards, I do watch the broadcast, by the way. I appreciate that. Bless you, my friend. Thank so you. I really do appreciate everyone for coming on. I appreciate Bartholomew County Library. Get out and vote. Again, the elder, um, uh, the early voting, as uh, elder has said, will be at the Carson Center. There is COVID testing going on in the JCPenney. Totally different ventilation system. There's no reason to think that just because you're in the mall per se, any compartment, let me put it that way, that you will contract anything. You will not. It is safe, secure. And then um, if you go to Bartholomew County Voter Registration, they have all of the uh, polling sites and everything. And no matter if you're in E-Town, Hope, Taylorsville, there's somewhere to vote for you. But the best thing is absentee ballot. We are uh, one thing that I want to mention real quick and clarify this. Jay Phelps uh, made the clarity we are not a mail-in state, which means that Washington and Oregon, they are a strict mail-in state. There is no other counting. There is no other way to vote. You cannot go to a poll. Uh, Hawaii is also the same thing. All the rest of the U.S. is you either have the option to request a mail-in ballot or you have the option to go to the poll. Six to six on the Tuesday in November. And if you need anything, feel free to reach out either to us, to Pastor Edwards, to anyone on that team. We thank you, everybody, for teaming up with us and helping us. Thank we you. will look forward to if rain or shine this event's going to go on thursday we'll look forward to being there and possibly doing another facebook live awesome also i want to throw in there october 11th uh will be a moment for justice a group of three young ladies from csa new tech have come together and partnered with the naacp so thank you again for that Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. This concludes our Zoom session. And uh, if you have any ideas that you want us to go approach city, county officials, whoever the case may be, feel free to send us a message and we'll make sure and get them on sometime within the next few months. Like I said, we're going to try to do weekly videos. So good night. Everybody stay safe. And uh, don't forget, please wear your face mask. I know some people don't like it. One thing we do need to make clear, Pastor Edwards, face masks are required for Thursday. Yes, it is. Correct. Bring your Starts face at 12 noon. 12 o'clock. Yep. 12 o'clock to 1 noon, City Hall steps. Look All forward right. to seeing everyone there peacefully. Thank you, Pastor Edwards, and have a great Thank night. Thank you. You Thank too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.